The science delusion is the belief that science already understands the nature of reality in principle. What I do in my book, The Science Delusion, which is called Science Set Free in the United States, um, is take the ten dogmas or assumptions of science and turn them into questions. Hello and welcome. The Streisand effect is a funny thing. Would I have watched the guy standing barefoot on a grassy patch deliver a lecture about the supposed dogmas of science if it wasn't for a title like Banned TED Talk? Probably not. So I hope the TED organizers learned a valuable lesson today. Now, most of it is not worth commenting on in detail. For example, Dogma 9, which follows from Dogma 8, psychic phenomena like telepathy are impossible. Your thoughts and intentions cannot have any effect at a distance because your mind's inside your head. Yeah, no, there's no fundamental reason why we couldn't have evolved some form of biochemical radio communication, we just didn't. We reject telepathy because there's no evidence for it. Uh, every species has a kind of collective memory. Even crystals do. If we look at distant stars, I think our minds reach out in a sense to touch those stars and literally extend out over astronomical different distances. But there was one point where he was usefully wrong. He made a mistake that seems perfectly reasonable, and in fact, some of you might have made it too. Things like the gravitational constant, the speed of light, are called the fundamental constants. Are they really constant? I found that the speed of light dropped between 1928 and 1945 by about 20 kilometers per second. So I went to see the head of metrology at the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington, and I asked him about this. I said, what do you make of this drop? And he said, oh dear, he said, you've uncovered uh, the most embarrassing episode in the history of our science. I said, well, could the speed of light have actually dropped? And that would have amazing implications if so. He said, no, no, of course it couldn't have actually dropped. It's a constant. Well, he said, we've solved the problem. We fixed the speed of light by definition in 1972. It is true that since 83, not 72, the meter is defined in terms of the speed of light. One meter is the distance that light travels in about three billionths of a second. That doesn't mean we're blinding ourselves to changes in measurements of the speed of light, though, just like the interpretation of the result would be different. Let's think about this for a little bit. What does it mean to measure the speed of light? I'll be very naive. Imagine I have an iron bar and a clock. I shine a light along the side of the bar and start counting ticks. I wait for the light to reach the other side and stop counting. Now I know that light travels at a speed of one bar per however many ticks. And that number is what we call the speed of light. That is adequate for defining an experimental procedure, but it's not very useful as a way of thinking about what the speed of light fundamentally means. So let's go a little bit deeper. Imagine that my clock is Einstein's light clock. I set up two mirrors in front of one another and bounce a light pulse between them. Each bounce is one tick. So like before, I shine light from one end of the bar to the other, and count ticks. But here is what's strange. If light traveled twice as fast, it would take half as much time to move along the bar, but the clock would also take twice as fast. At the end of the day, the number you measured, the ratio between distance and time, is exactly the same. You might say I'm cheating because I use a light clock, so my argument is somehow circular. But that light clock is actually representative of what we think of as the passage of time. Think of how the human body works. Your muscles are just extremely well-optimized electric motors. Your brain is a fantastically sophisticated electrochemical computer. The speed at which your brain, muscles, and other biological processes work is determined by how quickly an electric charge over here can feel the movement of an electric charge over there. And that depends on how fast light can move from here to there. The speed at which you think, move, and act depends fundamentally on the speed of light. If light slows down, you and any chronometer you might use also slow down. A lot of people have the impression that the numerical value of the speed of light is somehow extremely important. Everything we know about physics today is dependent on the speed of light being a constant throughout the existence of the universe. If the speed of light changes, then all of physics changes with it. It's the other way around. If the speed of light changes, nothing changes. That is why we define the meter in terms of the speed of light. Another example. At this moment, the kilogram is defined in terms of a prototype, which is an object made of a platinum iridium alloy kept locked away in a vault in the International Bureau of Weights and Measures in Sèvres, France. In the near future, the kilogram is likely to be defined in terms of Planck's constant, because, like the speed of light, we could never see change. 
The same goes for other natural constants like the gravitational constant big G, the permittivity and permeability of the vacuum, or Boltzmann's constant. These constants have the role of converting between the units that humans defined for our convenience and the scales that are relevant for natural processes. Nature doesn't care what a meter or a second is, so how can it care what the speed of light is in meters per second? There is one caveat. In this discussion, I have assumed that certain physical theories we'd have at the moment are at least partly correct. For example, I assume that the core of special relativity, a concept known as Lorentz invariance, is correct. So what is truly crucial is that scientists check for violations of Lorentz invariance. But of course they never do that, right? I mean, it's dogma. Hmm? Hold on for a second. I've just been delivered a few papers examining this very issue. They haven't found anything yet. But since whoever does find something will probably get a Nobel Prize, there's a very high incentive to keep looking. So there really isn't much of a dogma that the speed of light is immutable. There's just a realization that changes in the speed of light are not measurable, and thus fall outside the purview of science. This is our understanding at the moment. It could change in the future, but it's been a fruitful insight. So for now, we'll keep it. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.